Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm Raptoy Def, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the FE Civil Exam. Now this really applies to all FE exams, and today I'm just really gonna be giving you my best advice on how to pass it. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy this video. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is just a general overview of the actual FE exam. Um, it's 110 questions divided into two parts. In between each part, you get a 25 minute break. Uh, the exam runs for a total of six hours. If you break that down, you get about three minutes per question. Um, and I'll talk about time management towards the end of the video. But essentially, going to, into the exam, you'll be given uh, the reference manual, the FE reference manual, which you can download right now from the NCES website, which is what you should do first. This manual has... Um, all the equations you pretty much need to to use to solve problems it has tons of concepts units conversions um, so much plethora of information for each subject on the fe so whenever you're practicing problems make sure you use this manual make sure you get really comfortable with it um, understand where everything is uh, and that will really put you in a good good standing to take the fe and on the actual exam, I should mention that you can use keywords to search through the manual to save you some time. Alongside that, you'll be, um, of course, taking in a calculator for the exam. Here I have the TI-30XS. I've had this calculator since freshman year of college, so I really know all the ins and outs of it. And that's what you should do. This is what I highly recommend. Get a calculator, make sure it is approved by the NCES. I'll post in the description below um, the calculator policy so you can make sure that you're using an appropriate calculator. But basically you wanna learn all the functions on your calculator. This will save you so much time. Just for an example, uh, you don't wanna be using the standard deviation equation um, on a statistics problem during the actual exam. Your calculator can solve you know all of that information for you within seconds. So make sure you understand your calculator and you know how to use it and are comfortable with it that's really important now of course the best way to prepare for the exam is to do as many practice problems as you can now make sure you're using the fe reference manual while you're doing them so you get a good feel of where different equations are different concepts things like that now the best investment that you can make to properly prepare for the fe exam this applies to all FE exams, is on the NCES website, they sell practice exams. And this is the civil practice exam I have here. It's $30, it comes with 100 practice problems. And in the back, it shows you all the solutions for the problems. The reason why I highly recommend this as the best investment you can make is that the problems in this exam are the same difficulty as the actual FE you'll take. So if you can solve these problems, you're in great shape to take the actual FE. Now, it's not verified, but it's highly speculated that you need at least a 60 to a 65% to pass the FE civil exam. So if you're taking this practice exam, and if you're scoring about you know, 70 to a 75% or higher, you're in really good standing. So like I said, this is the best investment you can make for thirty dollars a hundred really solid practice problems with solutions do them multiple times understand their solutions how to how to actually solve them and you'll be in good shape now the second best investment that you can make is actually in a review refresher course now i highly recommend the school of pe refresher course uh, for the fe exam they have two options. They have the online option and they have the on-demand version. Now, for me, I took the on-demand version. Let me break this down for you. So the online version, basically, you're given a set schedule and you'll have live, um, pretty much teachings or lectures of all the different topics on the FE exam given by um, you know, very efficient professors you can ask them questions in the chat box whenever you need to. They'll give you general notes that you can print out and write on. And each topic gives you about at least 15 practice problems, which are really good for preparing for the exam. Now, for me personally, I did the on-demand version. Uh, basically, 
it was the live version videos pre-recorded so the only thing about this was I couldn't um, type in questions in the chat box obviously because they were recorded videos but you can always email your professor if you need to uh, but yeah you're given all the videos you need all the content you need for each chapter each topic on the exam you're given practice problems and you're given general notes you can print out and write on the reason why I highly recommend School of PE, now not sponsored by them or anything, but if you want to check them out, they go over everything you need to know for the FE, nothing less and nothing more. And they do a great job of just giving you a very strong understanding and foundation of all the topics covered in the FE exam. So I highly recommend it. I'll put the link in the description below if you wanna check it out. A cheaper alternative that will help you prepare for the FE exam if you don't wanna take a course and if you enjoy reading are the Lindenberg um, FE Civil Review Manual and FE Civil Practice Problems. Now, let's talk about the review manual first. This is a really big book, comes with tons of concepts, a good amount of problems before each chapter that you can take. Uh, the only gripe I have about this book is that it actually goes over more topics than are actually on the FE exam. For me, like I said, I only really want to study um, what's actually on the exam. I don't want to study more. I don't want to study less. So keep that, keep that in mind. Um, and if you don't mind reading and if you don't mind learning more than you have to, this is a much cheaper alternative and a pretty solid choice. Coupled with that, you have the FE civil practice problems. These are great practice problems. Comes with over 460 multiple choice problems in here. However, um, some of the problems in here are much harder than what you'll see on the actual FE, which is a good and bad thing. Bad thing is you might stress over them if you can't solve them. Good thing though, if you can solve them and if you understand them, you're gonna be very prepared for the FE. Now I wanna give you some general advice on taking the actual FE exam. Um, the first one will be time management. So, like I mentioned before, you only get about three minutes per question, which means you definitely have to pace yourself. There might be questions you run into on the actual exam that you can't solve or you don't necessarily know how to solve. Take, you know, two to three minutes, work out the problem, and if you can't solve it, flag it and move on. I know it's, it's tough kind of admitting defeat on one question and just, you know, just guessing, giving your best shot on a guess. But you only need about a 60 to a 65% or higher to pass. So it's okay to get some questions wrong. You wanna save as much time as possible for the easier questions or the questions you know how to solve. Um, so yeah, don't get stuck on one question. Don't spend too much time on one. If it's been three minutes or so, flag it, give it your best guess and just move on. My next step of advice I would like to give you is no conversions, no units, um, and pretty much the core fundamentals of what you've been using your entire undergraduate career, and maybe even your, uh, your working career as well. What I mean by this is know what a cubic yard to a cubic foot is, or you know what the conversion is from feet to meters, centimeters to meters, um, you know, all the prefixes, know what gravity is, 9.81 meters per second squared, or the unit weight of water um, in both SI and uh, US units. That's just really important. Um, it's gonna save you a lot of time. You don't have to go back to the conversions page. Now, if you do forget them, you do have the conversions page on the FE reference manual, but it will save you so much time if you just know them like that, um, and you'll just work through the problem so much quicker. So if you can memorize them and understand them, and bring that with you inside your head into the exam, you know, you'll be really well prepared. Now my last piece of advice is pretty much the method of back solving. What I mean by this is that on the exam, the majority of questions are multiple choice, meaning that one of those choices that they give you is gonna be correct. Now if you don't know how to solve a problem, you can back solve, plug those potential answers into the question and see which one makes the most sense. Uh, this is a really good method for at least getting rid of the definite not correct answers um, and it will give you a better shot at choosing the correct one. So if you don't know how to solve a problem or if you're stuck on something, 
um, look at the answers um, and, and see which one makes the most sense or see which one you can actually use to solve the, the question. Well, that's pretty much everything that I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped in some way. Um, if you enjoyed it, please give it a like. Comment below what you think when you're taking your FE exam. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. And subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, the FE exam, if you put in the time and efforts, you definitely can pass it. I believe in you. More importantly, though, believe in yourself. You can do it. Until next time, stay beautiful. I'm Raptor Death. Peace out. Hey guys, thank you again for watching. Feel free to follow me on Instagram at the Lurchness Monster.